Hello everyone, today we're going to take a look at Visual Studio Code Server. We are going to implement and self-host Visual Studio Code Server locally on our own home lab servers, providing a workflow similar to GitHub Code Spaces but with less features as we'll talk about later. Visual Studio Code Server is a standalone, hostable implementation of the remote backend of the VS Code in the browser experience we all know and love. Think of it as your own GitHub Code Space with less features you can host locally. This is absolutely amazing since you can host Visual Studio Code Server on your own home lab or a remote server and have it be accessible anywhere. Furthermore, this allows us to offload the compute related tasks to our own local home lab server or remote server. So even if you're traveling with a crappy Chromebook, you'll still have access to your massive server resources. I'm going to walk you through how to set up an Ubuntu 22.04 virtual machine with my Type 1 hypervisor Proxmox, which will run the hosted instance of VS Code Server. Now you don't need to create a virtual machine with Proxmox to run VS Code Server. I've tried this setup with WSL or Windows Subsystem for Linux or any Ubuntu based Linux distribution and this will work just fine. But I'm just sharing the setup that I'm using in case others decide to do the same. I'll be showing you how to make VS Code Server run on system startup so it starts and runs automatically even if your virtual machine restarts since this feature isn't implemented out of the box. If you want to skip to the VS Code Server installation, please see the timestamp on the screen to skip to it. Now, before we go into this, it's best to acknowledge that VS Code Server is not production ready. So it's best we adjust our expectations going into this, since I experienced a few minor hiccups along the way when I was using it for a few days. The first thing we're going to do to set up the virtual machine is to download the Ubuntu 22.04 LTS ISO. We can do this by going to ubuntu.com forward slash download forward slash server. When you get here, you'd want to click on this download Ubuntu server 22.04.1 LTS button. So we're going to click the button here and then you're going to see it's going to redirect you to a thank you page and it's going to download the ISO automatically. So since we're going to load this ISO into Proxmox, we're just going to cancel the download by hitting Control J and just canceling the download. Now what we want to do is we want to copy this URL. We can right click and click copy link address. Now you want to head to your Proxmox graphical user interface to download the ISO to our Proxmox node. So to do this, we need to select a storage. So you might have local storage. In my case, I'm going to download it to this Stripe storage, which all of my nodes have access to. We're just going to click ISO images and then you're going to see here a button download from URL. We're going to provide the URL that we got from the download a while ago. We're going to click query URL to get the metadata and then we're just going to click download. So it's going to download the Ubuntu 22.04 LTS ISO to your choice of storage. We're just going to wait for this to resolve. All right. So once everything's completed, you should have an output similar to what you see here. So now we've downloaded the Ubuntu 22.04.1 ISO to our Stripe storage. Now we're going to create a virtual machine. So to do this, we're just going to right click and click create VM. We're going to assign this a VM ID. I'm just going to assign it to 701 and we're going to name it as Ubuntu VS Code Server. We're going to click next. We're going to select the ISO that we downloaded recently. We're going to select Stripe storage. In my case, you may have downloaded it to local, but in my case, I downloaded the ISO to Stripe storage. We're going to select the ISO image, Ubuntu 22.04, live server, amd64.iso. We're going to click next. We're just going to leave everything as default. We're going to click next. We're going to allocate 32 gigs. So 32 gigs is fine. We're going to allocate some CPU. So here we're going to allocate six cores, which is the maximum cores of my Omega PVE node. We're going to assign some memory. So here we're just going to provide eight gigs of memory. So 8192. So you can choose whether to give this more or less depending on your node setup. But for me, I'm going to provide eight gigs. We're going to set the network as default. We don't need to change anything here. We're going to click start after created, and then we're just going to click finish. Now you're going to see that our virtual machine is getting created by Proxmox. We're just going to wait for this to finish. And now you can see it's running. So what we want to do is we want to just click into this. We want to click console to start the Ubuntu installation. We're going to click the first option, which is try or install Ubuntu server. And here we're met with the Ubuntu 22.04 installation. So we're just going to select English. Feel free to select your language of choice. We're going to just click done. We're going to select the regular Ubuntu server, not the minimized version. And here we're just going to click done. 
And you can see the IP address 192.168.0.19. Make sure to take note of this since we're going to be using SSH to access our virtual machine later. We're just going to click done. We're not going to use a proxy. And here I'm just going to make a small modification to the mirror address for the Ubuntu mirrors. I'm going to use the US version and I'm going to click done. And here we can set everything as default and we're just going to click done. Click continue. We're going to provide a name for our server. So I'm just going to name the user as Ubuntu, the server name. So I'm going to type ubuntu vs code server name ubuntu i'll provide a password here confirm the password and click done we're going to install open ssh as well we're not going to install any snap packages because i don't like snaps and we're just going to wait for the installation to complete once everything is complete you should have a screen similar to this so we're just going to click reboot now wait for this to reboot and then we're just going to press enter here Okay, so our virtual machine has been created successfully. We're now going to head to our terminal to SSH into this virtual machine. So here I am at my terminal on my Windows PC. We're just going to SSH into that Ubuntu virtual machine we created. So we're just going to run SSH Ubuntu at 192.168.0.19. We're just going to type yes here. We're going to provide the password here and now we're in the virtual machine. So from here, we can start the Visual Studio Code Server installation for our virtual machine. So before we go ahead with the VS Code Server installation, there are some prerequisites that you may need to do for you to be able to install VS Code Server in the first place. So the first thing you'll have to do is go to this link here. I'll provide this link in the description below. So you're going to want to scroll down until you see the sign up form. In this case, it's here. So you'll have to sign up first before you could get access to VS Code Server. So you just click on this button here. You should get redirected to a sign up page. Fill in your details here and you're going to have to wait for an email. Just wait patiently. It could take a few weeks. In my case, I had to wait around three weeks to a month. I think the email you get when you get approved is something similar to this. So if you get this email in the following weeks or days, if you're lucky, you can now access VS Code Server. So assuming your VS Code Server access has been granted, the next thing you want to do is just run sudo apt update. Provide the password okay so the next thing we're going to do is run this command here this command is also in the vs code server documentation when you navigate to the sign up form but i'm also going to leave this in the description below so we're just going to run this and as you can see it's going to download the vs code server command line interface to our virtual machine or in your case probably your wsl installation so when you have an output like this that means that vs code server has been installed on your machine so the only thing we need to do is run this command here. Let me just zoom in. We're just going to clear this first. We're going to run code server dash dash accept server license terms. And you can see we're going to get prompted to visit this URL and provide the code. So we're just going to do that real quick. We're going to type the code provided to us in the command line interface. So 56C3F985. We're going to click continue. We're going to authorize Visual Studio Code and everything should be good. Going back to our terminal, we'll be prompted to name this machine so in this case we're just going to keep it simple name it as the server we're going to name it as ubuntu vs code server click enter here and you can see here it's going to create a tunnel we can access this url for our remote vs code instance so we're just going to click on this and you can see here that through the url that the command line interface has provided we can access our remote server so a disclaimer here i've experienced a lot of jank when i've used this in the past so if you do see something wrong just try to run the command again it's attempting to connect to our ubuntu vs code server currently it's downloading vs code server you will see this in the logs as well if you don't see this which i have experienced in the past where i visited the url it was just hanging and nothing happened so in this case you just want to control c or exit the command and then run it again right you just have to run code server accept server license terms and hope for the best like i said this isn't production ready but those are some of the issues i experienced previously so we're just going to wait for this to download. Now, on a side note, while VS Code is still being downloaded, this URL is protected via GitHub Auth. So we're just going to create a new incognito window here and paste in the same URL. And you can see you'll get prompted for GitHub authentication. So only your GitHub user can access this server instance. So we're just going to exit the incognito tab here. And you can see here that VS Code in the browser has started. So let's try to open some files, right? So the first thing we're going to do is let me just full screen this we're going to click this explore tab here we're going to open a folder okay so so these are the files of our remote server we're just going to click okay here 
And one thing to note, you can actually navigate to the correct directory via just modifying the URL. So you can see here that we wanted to navigate to home Ubuntu. So you can just modify the URL, save that as a bookmark and, you know, be on your way. So you're going to get prompted for this. Yes, I trust the authors and you can see the files here. So what I recommend you to do is you'd want to create a folder for all of your code files, right? Like your code workspace. So I'm just going to create a folder here, type in code workspace. You see the folder gets created. We're just going to modify the URL for code workspace. And you can see that we're in our code workspace directory. Now, a really cool feature that VS Code Server has implemented out of the box, similar to GitHub Code Spaces, is the implementation of port forwarding. This means if you're prototyping an application that is exposed via a port, VS Code Server takes care of creating a privately accessible domain you can use for testing. Emphasis on the privately accessible. I wasn't able to find a way to make domains provisioned by VS Code Server publicly accessible, which is really sad. And I really hope that the VS Code Server team makes this a feature in the future. But anyway, let's try to bootstrap a Node.js application and create an HTTP server. You can do this in your own language and framework. I'm simply using Node.js as my preference. So we're going to open the terminal here and you can see that we are in our remote server. We're going to run sudo apt install npm node.js-y to install npm and node.js provide the password and wait for that to resolve okay so once all of the dependencies and packages have completely installed we're just going to create a new directory for our node express project so we're going to make dir hello world express and you can see here that the directory gets created we're going to cd into this directory so cd hello world express and then we're going to run an npm init dash y okay so our package.json gets created we're going to create an index.js file via the touch command so we can just run touch index.js so our index.js file gets created so from here we're going to install express so we're going to run npm install express okay so once that's completed you should have a node modules directory created. We're just going to write some code to run an express server. So here I created some really easy boilerplate code that exposes port 3000. And if we access that port 3000 on the root URL, we should get hello world. Nothing too fancy. So from here, we're going to run node dot. And you can see here that the application is working. So you will get a prompt similar to this when you run applications that uses ports. So you can see here your application running on port 3000 is available. See all forwarded ports, right? So let's first click see all forwarded ports. And here you can see all of the ports that VS Code Server has proxied through this domain. So you can see the local address is this URL here. And if we click this, you should see hello world. Let me just zoom in a little bit just so it's visible. But yeah, hello world. So our express application port 3000 is being proxied through this domain, making this accessible anywhere. Now, there isn't a way to make this publicly accessible at the moment. I believe in GitHub code spaces. If you right click on this local address, there is an option to make this public. Unfortunately, that's not the case here. So this URL is also protected via GitHub auth. So if we just open an incognito tab here and paste in the URL, you can see that it requires the username and password. A cool thing you could do is you can also run as a PWA. So if you click this here where it says to open this link, choose an app and click Visual Studio Code Insiders and open it, it's going to behave similar to your VS Code on your local machine, right? But this is a browser instance, so you can drag it. So if you don't want to run this in a browser, you may want to click that button to make it feel like you're running a desktop application because at the end of the day, VS Code Server is an Electron application. It's built using Electron. So this feature is available if you wanted to write code this way. So those are the features that I just wanted to showcase over the few days that I've used VS Code server. However, you can see here that we may have a problem. And the problem is what if we're going to come back to our terminal and what happens if we close this SSH session? So we're just going to exit this, just close the terminal entirely. Now what happens? So you can see here it's loading, right? We're just going to open this in Chrome again. And you can see here that it no longer works. So the reason why this no longer works is because we've closed our connection. So either we run a command that persists even if our SSH connection closes, or we find a way to run this as a systemd service, 
right? So we're just going to close the browser. We're going to open up our terminal again. We're going to SSH again. SSH Ubuntu at 192.168.0.19. Provide the password. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a systemd service so that code server will run in the background every time we start or restart this virtual machine. Unless you want to keep having to SSH into your virtual machine, this would be the way to go for now. It's sort of like a hacky way to do it, but it is a way to do it, right? So from here, we're going to run sudo nano etc systemd system code server dot service by the password we're just going to paste some text in this file basically what you need to understand is whenever our virtual machine starts and there is a network established right we just want to run this code server accept server license terms which is the exact same command we ran a while ago to start code server i'm just going to delete this so in this case i inputted the value of user as ubuntu so if you have another user make sure that it's set here Otherwise, it's going to ask for re-authentication, which we really don't like. I'm just going to save this, exit. And from here, what we can do is run sudo system ctl start code server, right? Let's check the status to see if everything is working correctly. So sudo system ctl status code server. And you can see here that um, this is the link to our instance that we accessed a while ago, right? It may not be apparent here. Let me just minimize this a little bit. Okay, so we're just gonna exit that. And then we're going to run sudo system ctl enable code server. So this command basically tells systemd that we want to run this code server.service, the file that we created a while ago, to run on system startup. So you won't have to run the code server command again. It'll all work automatically, even if you restart the virtual machine or if you close the SSH connection, right? So so to test that, let's run a reboot. So right now we're just going to do sudo reboot. And you can see that our SSH connection has been terminated. Our virtual machine is closed. So we're just going to wait for a few minutes until it turns back on again. So it's been a few minutes. Let's try to SSH again. So we're just going to run SSH Ubuntu at 192.168.0.19. Provide the password here. Okay, so we're now in our virtual machine. Let's check the code server service if it's working correctly. So let's run sudo system ctl status code server by the password. And you can see here, if you're getting an output similar to this and not like re-authentication where it wants you to access the GitHub login page again and provide the code, then you did it right, okay? If not, you just wanna rewatch the tutorial all over again. So here we can just control click and you can see that it still works, right? So let's try to navigate to our home Ubuntu code workspace directory to see if all of the files are still there. Looking promising, looking promising. And you can see that it now works just fine without the SSH connection. So to prove that, we're just going to exit. We're going to do the test again. We're going to exit this. We're going to close the terminal. We're going to refresh the page just to see if everything still works. And there you go. So we were able to create a systemd service on our Ubuntu virtual machine so that code server will run automatically on system startup so that it doesn't depend on any SSH connection or running terminal commands. So that's it for the video. Hopefully it was informative. And if you feel like it was, feel free to leave a like and sub to the channel. Thanks.